Let's make sure this audio is coming through. Hey, everybody. We have several of you who are joining me early right now as we are going live in... Looks like clock is at that angle right there. Shelby Diamond Star is here. Woohoo! Hey, Mary Beth. Hey, the, he's there, so I'd say there's a good chance. <laughs> what were you saying? Um, there's a good chance of what? There's no sound yet. No, there wasn't. You're probably about 20 seconds behind before I turned the mic on. This is the standby. This is the before action. <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like I might need a little more brightness. Wow. Now we're looking at some bright, bright Aaron King. Maybe too bright. Change that ISO up. Let's go down to a thousand. Mohammed El Mohammadi. Allo from Michigan. Hey, hey, another Michigan. We have so many Michigan and Illinois people here. It's awesome. I know that the population just kind of of our country dictates that that's going to happen, but it's awesome. Now there is, George says, sweet, cool. You're hearing me in the pre-show, the pre-game. So let's see, it's 6.45. We're live in 15 minutes, and what happens is that I'm going to play some videos for you. I have one that's 11 minutes long and two two-minute videos. That clock says 16.25. It's really only 15, so we'll just ignore a minute and 45 seconds of that. So welcome on everyone who's here for the pre-show. Milky Way Wednesday is about to start. If you're actually new to Milky Way Wednesday and you thought of a question, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I have a question right now I want to ask, but he's not talking about that topic. It doesn't matter if it could be completely on a different topic. Well, at least try and keep it Milky Way related. And it doesn't matter if you write it now. Write it now. Do all caps so that I see that question later when I tackle questions at the end. Um, let's see if it hears. How's the audio sounding to you? I'm going to go ahead and listen to this guy. Da -da 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 -da. Test the audio. You know what? I think you weren't hearing anything I was saying as I was checking that audio. But that's okay. We're in the pregame. You're chatting. I'm chatting. John Henry Reese is here. JHM. Aaron, please allow me to say that your channel is one of my favorite channels on YouTube. Mohammed, really? There are so many good channels. That is a huge compliment. Uh, you know what? Muhammad, I want to say I'm flattered and humbled, but honestly, I haven't done good enough. And so if it's already one of your favorite channels, this year is going to be a terrific year for both you and me because I'm going to keep pumping out better content. I got to figure some things. Yeah, Nick Holt pointed out, hey, you got mute. Yeah, I went to test the audio, and because I tested the audio, it decided to do monitor but not output. I don't know why that's an option. I guess I can test it and cough into it. I don't know. So, yeah. Hey, Muhammad, that is hugely complimentary, and it gets me excited because I have a lot of plans to make it just a little bit more polished, a little bit nicer, and that's going to make it much more fun. So we're live on YouTube, but not live yet. I like to do this for people who are hesitant on, oh, is Aaron going to go live? Long story short, in the first year of Photog Adventures back in 2016, I would do live streams, and people would sit there, you know, ready to go, watching the live. <gasps> And then he wouldn't be live at 7. He wouldn't be live at 7.04. I wouldn't be live at 7.08. And I'd be texting, you know, scared, worried texts to people on Facebook. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. It's just not working. Or over on YouTube. I'm like, hey, let everyone know in the group that it's not working. The tech is broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so because the tech issues have provided such, such fun. Let me go ahead and turn off monitor now. And make sure my audio is coming through. Yep, it is. The Dunder Mifflin hoodie. <laughs> you know, I'm actually changing into my Star Wars hoodie for the tonight's live. But 
There's really nothing wrong with this hoodie. Maybe it's not like I have like a big food dribble or something all the way down here that I should change it for. So maybe let's represent Dunder Mifflin. I'm blending well. Dunder Mifflin doesn't represent uh, science and Milky Way photography, but neither does Star Wars. It just kind of hints at it and plays with the sci-fi part of our brains. So we're truly learned a lot from you, Aaron, and we want to thank you for that. Mohammed, you are awesome. You are so kind. I thank you. Thank you. And let me know in a year. Aaron, you told me back in February on the 9th that this was going to get better. And tell me, hey, it got markedly better and even better than I thought? Or if it's like, hey, Aaron, you kind of coasted and went par and just didn't do anything really different. So let me know honestly if you think that the next year from now until 2023, if I hit that goal that I have for 2022. Have you got pants on this week? Nick is wondering. Yeah, I actually am wearing jeans. Check it out. I don't have a belt, but I don't have pants. I'm actually going to need a belt again soon. I'm losing so much weight. My tip of the day from Ryan Luna, if tracking relatively close to the car, bring a beach umbrella to block the wind. That's an interesting idea. Won't the beach umbrella be like a sail and just take the wind off? I'm definitely going to use that, but tell me more about it, Ryan, and I can use that later in the Q&A. Love to see all friends here like Blake, Nick, and Ryan. All you guys are back. I love it. Muhammad, you're making me blush. It's a good thing I have the white light on here so bright you can't even tell that I'm blushing. Uh, anyone want to give me a, a lighting check? Oh, it's 11 minutes. I need to start that video. That lighting check. I got 30 seconds for you guys to tell me, hey, Aaron, you know that light is kind of too bright. Blows you out too much. Maybe it's okay. KC, I want to take a trip, trip out to Salt Flats last weekend of June for portrait stuff and maybe Milky Way. Anything I should know before planning? Yes, Keith, yes. Okay, I will not forget that. We will talk about that at the end. <laughs> and my workshop for that area isn't sold out. So maybe Keith can join us. And Earl says hi. Hey, Earl, you know what, man? I've been looking for that information. And between that computer and this, that spreadsheet where I wrote it up with Mary Beth and broke down all of the costs, I cannot find it. Your email is not forgotten. It is already Wednesday. I almost sent you one today to say, hey, Earl, I haven't written you back. I'm sorry, but I'm not ignoring it. I just can't find the actual accurate information. It's roughly $400, but is it 310 Is it 280 Is it 480 I think it's only somewhere between 350 and 400 but I got to get you the right information. And so I haven't sent it back to you, but I'm glad you're here today, Earl, and not mad at me. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Light looks good, Thomas says. Awesome. Did you get your dinner, Thomas? You were saying something about dinner, and then I didn't read your backup post when I was trying to fix some graphics. Oh, I should shut up and start the video because I got a few more graphics that I'm updating the colors on, and we'll be back in 10 minutes live with Milky Way Wednesday. Well, I just slipped into my NASA shirt and the red undershirt for one last time. I have worn it, washed it several times, worn it every night for 23 nights, under a jacket at least, if not on the top. And now it's my last, last time. With a lot of relief, I actually am glad it's the 23rd night. I'm here at Natural Bridges National Monument. I'm gonna let you see a time lapse as I drive through here and go to Oachomo Bridge. But I uh, wanted to say before I came in that it's exciting to be done. I'm very tired. I haven't had a regular work schedule, a regular life schedule for three weeks and two days. It's been interesting, very interesting. You know, seriously, if you think you love something, you're gonna have to go out and do it for 23 days 23 days and nights in a row. <sighs> Let me say it this way. If you think you love something, do it 23 nights in a row and you'll find out how much you love it. Trailhead. 
says right here that it is trail to bridge 0.2 miles so 0.20 zero, two, no no point two oh. so 0 0.2 0 0.32 kilometers very very easy hike I'm going to show you the pathway up here but if you have hiked around uneven ground or rocks then you will be familiar with this kind of hike but there's actually stair stepping happening they have carved some of the rocks like that into a stair <laughs> lock the truck and so they've made it really easy for you it's a very comfortable hike I've even hiked down there forgotten some gear and hiked back up to grab it that's how much the hike is easy but uh Really beautiful, you guys see it. As you can see, uneven, crazy path. But this is the kind of parts where the trail is hairy. But then up here, let's show you how easy it is you run it. But up here, you end up with steps. Little steps. Boop, boop, boop. Literal steps. Literal steps. I'm not kidding. I mean look how they've been cut out from the rock perfectly squared too so really nice handrail if you want to call it that and then just more steps more steps behind so it's really easy path guys definitely worth the walk I'm right now at eye level eye level with Oachomo bridge right here and you can see it whew, cutting across right there I guess move my hand the opposite direction but yeah this right here is not the angle you want to capture the Milky Way, of course. You have to get down in there. Let me show you. Oh, Wachomo Bridge. Here it is. And as you can see in this spot right here, we get a nice window to look into the Milky Way in the southeast. That core looks fantastic right here. But as the night goes on and the moon finally sets, it's behind this rock. And so you can't do anything with that. You can't shoot it. So that's why we have to go across over there tonight to fire back this direction to actually see the core in the window of the bridge. So that's gonna work. It's right here on this rock. I can't see anything. Right here on this rock is where I need to be. Or just off of this rock right here, this area and back is where I'm shooting tonight. I'm on a 24, I'm on a 24 millimeter. So I might have to go even further back to make this work, but the Milky Way core will be right out there. And I got 20 minutes to take the shot, but all the way up until those 20 minutes, those last 20 minutes, I'm gonna be getting my composition right. While the moon's up, I don't care. I'll get my composition perfect. And then just take the shot as soon as the moon sets and it's dark and I'm ready to go. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna take a break. It's around 5.30, 6 o'clock. The sun is up, obviously, so still lots of time before my exact moment of the moon set at 3.45. So I won't even hike down here until about 3 o'clock. That'll give me lots of time to hike down, get set up, and be ready to go. All right, look at the bubble right in the center. <laughs> Here's my first shot. You can see, see how much is visible right here of the bridge with the moonlight. And then you can see the Milky Way is just completely washed out. Okay, I have about two or three minutes left until Astro Twilight, or I'm sorry, till the moon has set. And then I have 20 minutes until Astro Twilight. I'm right at the point where the moon has set, but it's barely begun. And Astro Twilight's gonna begin very soon. So I have probably this little perfect five minutes in between there where it's full darkness. So no more videos. I'm just gonna capture and I'll come back to you afterwards. You see what I'm seeing? This is just amazing. And the only disappointment whatsoever is look at this picture, this frame. This is just the end of all the pano. I just went ahead and took a nice horizontal shot. And you can see right here how the Milky Way core is like up against and inside the rock. If I move myself over there, I could get more Milky Way free from that rock, but it doesn't really matter. Astronomical twilight has begun starting now. It is over 23 straight nights of Milky Way is over <sighs> I'm in the International Dark Sky site Natural Bridges National Monument I'm under the Oachomo Bridge can you even make it out uh, you can kind of see no you can't see anything oh wait no eh, eh, eh. you can kind of see that rock <sighs> it is fantastic to end in this location one of my favorite locations to do Milky Way photography 
The International Dark Sky designation is fantastic too because one of the most like civilized, easy to drive to areas to have utter darkness. Unfortunately, I'm on a night with the moon and Astro Twilight butted up against each other between 20 minutes of leeway time, which is not really enough. You can see how it's washed out just a tad, just a tad as it has some light in the, in the horizon out, out there. It's just bluer and not to mention that the core is on the horizon where the air glow becomes more apparent. And so I'm dealing with all of that to make this work. It's hard not to be happy with a shot like this, even though the Milky Way is up against the edge. Can't wait to see how it looks in a full pano. I I'm be disappointed that it wasn't more out in the middle, but that just means I get to come out here and do it again. That just means I get to come out here and capture it, but not going to be in July. Thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying these videos. I am signing off for Finally, I am not creating yet another video. This camera is not going to be filled up with more video of Aaron King out here, and I'm just done <laughs> for the next month. So if you've just barely found this video, there's 22 other videos on YouTube that you can watch. Follow the story. Hashtag the Great Milky Way Chase. Thank you so much. Thanks for following. <sighs> See you guys. When suddenly I hear, <sighs> it sounded like someone had just snuck up from behind me and breathed on my neck. <sighs> what are you doing out here? What are you gonna do, little guy? And I was afraid <laughs> immediately. You know that little afraid stance that we get? The, all the way out there. Or we could continue out. To not be in this angle, because then everything's really flat. This place is all to myself. Oh, there it is. Find some farmland, that's awesome. The rock face itself is getting lit, but not all the bushes. They're setting up their cameras, who knows what they're using yet. Brandon's on the 5D Mark III. What are you on, Phil? Uh, Nikon D810. Nikon D810, so he's got a fantastic camera. It's a very quick night because I gotta get back to sleep, but Milky Way number 11, Lupa. Capture a Milky Way behind some sea stacks and the ocean, and man, it's awesome coming from the desert and going to the beach. Man, that histogram is great. Windy, it's cold, but we got this awesome Milky Way right on the horizon. We got a nice Milky Way panel coming up, so I've gotta get out. Clouds out there are causing problems. This is why I have to go far away. I have to go and do familiar territory again. Before I have to go to familiar territory. <laughs> I'm so tired. Or trespassing. Get a new battery, start my time lapse, and I'm gonna watch a movie. Wow, I might have a flat tire. If the clouds open up, awesome. If they don't, you know, I can just go back to bed and be glad to know that I came out here and I tried. Shutter, okay, good, <laughs> it's working. So as I've been capturing Milky Way Mike over there, my time lapse has been going off and you can see that my terrain has all that golden light. Like it's way overly golden in this video. Let me go. I swear I turned that audio off and yet it didn't come in. Let's check it out. Cam chat audio there. Cam chat chat there. Opener with me audio is on. Main ticker audio is on. Okay. Woo. All right. Hey, welcome in. It's Milky Way Wednesday. I'm Aaron King with Photog Adventures. And today I actually get to teach with my iPad. <laughs> Those of you who are longtime fans of the show have recognized that I love using my iPad. And so... <laughs> I'm reading some of the chat, distracted by the chat, because just like one of the people who have followed me from the beginning, Rhonda Pierce, has just said that it's kind of like a bloopers reel, but not. She's talking about the end of that video where I went through the 23 straight nights of Milky Way. 
<sighs> wow, it was nuts. Mary Beth Kaczynski, who is Shelby Diamond Star right here, she uh, has experienced the 23 straight nights of Milky Way and how challenging, taxing, and just hard to make it creative and different is that, that, that work on there. Okay, it's the 17th night. What to capture now? Where are the clouds? Am I going to be able to see the Milky Way? So much fun. But, oh, man, I just want to talk to the chat real quick before we get going completely into the lesson. Because tonight I promised you my new favorite Milky Way tip. Oh, it is absolutely the thing that I tell every one of my workshops first thing now. It's like, oh, and by the way, blah, 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 Roa Fuki, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, know where the rake is, and then boom, <laughs> that is something I love. But while I go into that, I'm also going to share a bunch of other tips for knowing your cosmos and getting ready to get out there for your Milky Way. It's February. We have a you know a Milky Way that is starting to be good for panoramas, but some interesting uniqueness to it. So we're going to talk about that. If you join me on Monday Moment of Envy, you probably have heard all the stuff I'm going to say tonight about the February Milky Way Arch. But then I'm also going to talk about some of my other favorite Cosmos tips, like looking at the moon, knowing what it says about that night, looking at the stars, which stars are going to you know, bookend the Milky Way core. When you see the constellation of this and the constellation of that, where is the Milky Way in that sky? You can see it quickly. And so there's a couple things that I want to talk about today, all about Milky Way photography and all about the stuff that we are going to have fun talking and teaching together. So, so stoked to be back here. So I've got some comments on the chat that I'm going to address, and we'll get started. Mark, hey, man. Aaron, we shot the man-made bridge, not the natural bridge. Yeah, it's true. We, we, I think we we're planning on go. No, we weren't, were we, Mark? We were all the way up in Escalante area, and we were heading over to Fairyland Point. Weather was bad, and so we ended up going all the way we could past, you know, middle of Utah over towards more Moab, but we weren't at Moab yet. We had gone on a pathway that leads there. If you go down below, go to Natural, Natural Bridges National Monument, then go back up to Moab. And on that path, you pass a bridge. It's in Height Canyon Overlook area. And that's where Mark and I hung out for a night and captured a man-made bridge. And it was really fun. It turned out a lot better than I thought. Those time lapses, Mark, that I've never come. I haven't put them together yet. I have not shared them. I'm going to get them out. Next week, Keith reminded me that I was going to show you a Barnard's Loop Raw without any hard work on it, just how much tracking has brought out even that low contrast Barnard's Loop red loop there. And so we're going to talk about some of the star tracking tips that we've been talking about all this last month, uh, all of January, and talk about just showing you some example captures that I had with Mary Beth at the end of January, as well as we're going to go into some of those time lapses and have some fun about just what the night sky does and you know the things that you can do when there's clouds. And so we're going to talk about all the fun stuff. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, Daryl. <laughs> uh, Daryl says, holy crap, I know it's been a long time, but it's like seeing a shaved bear. <laughs> I guess I had a full beard last time I saw Daryl, and he does not recognize me. He saw me in Bistai. Did we see each other after Bistai last year? I guess not. It's been almost a year, man. It's been almost a year. Went to Fairland Point and then turned around, Mark reminds me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get going with Milky Way Wednesday right now. We're going to get into the lesson. And since I have an iPad that I can share the screen, <laughs> I'm excited to have that functionality back. I can tell you that. Uh, I'm going to put this window over here. I'm going to close out of my Photoshop. And boom, have it. How's it going, James? Man, James was out with me at a salt flats, and we were asked earlier about any salt flats tips before you go. I think it was Keith who said he's going to go out to the salt flats. And I have some tips for you, Keith. And I do want to talk about how James Baker and I experienced a little bit different water niceness out there. Not the ideal water level to make my favorite, sh one of my favorite shots, my second favorite shot of all time. So, yeah, let's get going. And 
any of you who have questions as I'm going through this, just hit me up with all caps on the chat. Make sure that this chat line, when I scroll, I have it up in the window over here too. When I scroll through here to see what questions I have pending, I will see them easy. For instance, Ryan Luna commented during the pregame, you know, the before the show starts as I leave it on live so you know that I'm coming. Ryan Luna gave me a comment, and we're going to talk about that. And he did respond back. Da, da, da. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to come back to that at the end in the Q&A. So let's get going. Let's have some fun with Milky Way Wednesday and show you my iPad screen. <laughs> you know what? I just had a thought. That would be kind of fun because there's so much empty space right below me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do something while I'm live. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a February Milky Way example that if you didn't come to Monday Moment of Envy over on my Facebook page, you haven't seen this yet. And this image from Neil Zingle is my hands down favorite February Milky Way image. Now, other images I've seen that I may have loved, I didn't know they were in February or not. They looked low, but were they February, March? I, I don't know necessarily. Maybe their latitude line was different, so it looks more low. There's things coming into play. I know for a fact this was captured in February, and this is the kind of Milky Way you're going to run into. I'm going to let you see it while I kind of ho-hum do two things at once. So just give me a second and enjoy this from Neil Zingle. <laughs> no, I will not tell you where this is, but those of you who know it, know it. And um, it's a tough area to make sure there's not people around you. So, da, 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 da. what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Right, copy last. I have to, I have to go in here, and I'm going to copy and paste some stuff, and that is what is happening behind the scenes. So... Bum, 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 bum. Ooh, you know what? It's going to look funny at first. That's all right. That's all right. You guys will forgive, I hope. And you know what? It might even work with the current one. Oh, you know what? It does. Kind of. Kind of perfectly. How bad would it be for me just to size it down? Oh, that's not bad at all. In fact, that's what I'll do. I don't even have to do all that hard of work to make this happen. Sweet. Teresa's comment. No, let's set it up from the top and go down. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get the chat in here. I had that extra space. Teresa's commenting on the beard, too. <laughs> you didn't have a beard when I met you. So Teresa knows my face as this face. So I shouldn't even talk about it as being the only face that people know. Okay, Neil Zingle's image. Now my extra space down here is usable. Let's have some fun. You know what? I have too many keyboards on my desktop right now. I need some. I need some uh, space for my my iPad. Let's bring this guy over. February Milky Way is a challenge that I hope some of you have already experienced a little of in the last few days. In fact, let me just remind you about Photo Pills information for our Milky Way right now. If you have Photo Pills on your phone, you're gonna see it a little different than my iPad. But this is everything in here. <laughs> Mohammed says, this image is making me speechless. Amen, man. Amen. I love that image. It's just, it's so good. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Right here, when we look at photo pills, the two places that I go to know, okay, is the Milky Way going to be up and is it going to be blocked by the moon? So I start with the moon and I click on the moon pill. You might have seen it. Let me just do a little beginner stuff and say, hey, here's the moon pill right here. Click on that and then go into it and it'll show you immediately where you are. Here's the location that I am and let's go ahead and change this location to another location like, <clears throat> let's go Goblin Valley. One of my favorite little state parks right around here in Utah. So in Goblin Valley State Park, if I wanted to make a three and a half hour drive to go and do Milky Way, would it be good tonight? And quickly, I'm just going to tell you that this is a 24 hour clock starting at 12 a.m. on the 9th, going all the way down till midnight on the 9th. If I want to see the morning of the 10th, which, you know, right now, what time is it? It is 7.15. No, not 7.15. Oh, it's almost 7.15. 7.13. And we're doing Milky Way Wednesday. This morning, 4.13 a.m. on February 9th is not useful information to me. I need to click over with this arrow. And boom, February 10th. Let's see what happens with the moon. Look at that giant moon. Ah, oh, you know what? It's not a new moon. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I can't get out there. Well, actually, oh, EJ Rosario's with us? Yes. Hey, EJ, he's one of the skilled, skilled 
we'll say college age um, masters of Milky Way photography. If you haven't followed EJ Rosario's YouTube channel, get on it. He's the one encouraging me to pay for three thousand dollars to buy another camera so that I can be cool like him and see things in the dark. And he's right. I'm going to, and I'm gonna have a better vlogging experience thanks to that camera that EJ has. So hey, yeah, EJ, welcome in. So. As I grab a drink and I look at this information, some of you are probably brand new to this, and so I won't go slow like you probably want me to. This is repeat information. You will find it on my channel. In fact, let me just remind everyone about that YouTube channel and the information that it contains. Let's take this always off top and pull this in. This is my YouTube channel, and the information on how to use PhotoPills is easily accessible. You can go down to the popular uploads, and boom, it's one of the most popular ones. How to use PhotoPills to plan your Milky Way. If you want more information, just go to that video, and you can see it. You don't have to expect me to give you a shortened version or a very extensive version right now. All right, let's go back into photo pills. This moon is huge. Why would I go out? Look at how gigantic it is. I'm going to show you a trick where you can look at that moon and go, hmm, the moon is down for some of the night. How much of the night and which hours? And I'm going to take a drink. <sighs> Drinking on camera is always good video. Okay. This is the moon that's a waxing gibbous. It's almost a full moon. There's no opportunity for Milky Way. Not quite, not quite. Check it out. It actually sets at 3.01 a.m. That's nearly up all night. It rose in the afternoon and actually set at 3.01 a.m. But it gave us a window. It gave us a slight window. And we're going to talk about that window of opportunity here today a little bit as well. But check it out. I could actually go out tonight despite being 73% illuminated and having a Milky Way capture between 4.27 a.m. and 5.50 a.m. And that leads me to my other comment that I wanted to write up on our February Milky Way. What do we have to deal with in our February Milky Way? First things first, I'll do this in bright orange, is short window. Of those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, we have a short window. Even those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, you have a short window. Just because we're dealing with the twilight times and you're in your summer, we're coming out of winter. It's a short window of opportunity. And so when you're looking at, you know, four, what was that again? Three, you know, 427 a.m. to 550 a.m. I have from 427 to 550. So that is roughly an hour and 20 minutes. So I have one hour, 20 minutes. Oh, man, I'm so glad to have my iPad back, but I need to maybe write a little more legibly because that looks like nonsense. One hour, 20 minutes and that is a good enough window for me to even do a tracked panorama, huh, Chris? Actually, it wasn't Chris Whiting. It was Chris... W w I'm forgetting your name on camera, Chris. Two Chris's hanging out with lately, and there's Chris, Chris Woodruff and Chris Whiting, both with W's, and it gets blended in my head. But I think it was Chris Whiting on Monday who told me during Monday Moment of Envy that he went out for his first February Milky Way and had a tough time getting his stack and track all to happen in that short period of time. It's just it's it's a tight window, so maybe it's not your time to do a big heavy stack, but it is a great time for the Milky Way as you know we sit here enviously looking at Neil Zingle's Milky Way. So let's talk about this Milky Way and do some of the classic stuff that I have so, so missed since I moved my iPad over. Oh, here we go. Getting my colors back. Where are my favorite colors? Right here. Woohoo. Okay, Milky Way circle. Oh, I'm not on it. Oh, this pencil. The Milky Way core. Eh, I hate it. Let's go here. Let's have it do a circle for me. The Milky Way core is fighting the horizon. That's the biggest part of our February Milky Way that we're challenged with. How am I doing on time? Okay, we're doing okay on time. Got to get to that favorite tip. I got to get to that new favorite tip really soon. Well, when we're talking about the horizon, you have a terrain that is your horizon. And depending on your latitude line, the Milky Way core, let's do that with an X in the center of the Milky Way up here. At some point, this, let's do, let's do this blue color. At some point, oh, at some point, the space between that core and the zero degree horizon is 
you know, revealing that the Milky Way has been up for a certain amount of time. If this part of the Milky Way was down here, let's just draw my X in gold again. If that is below the zero point, it says your Milky Way hasn't risen. Once it gets up to that line, it's risen. And once it gets up here, the rest of the morning, it is there. So when I'm looking at my photo pills, it says galactic center visibility starts at 427 AM. What is that saying? That's saying that precisely this section of the Milky Way, only that section has finally reached past that horizon point. And I draw that line to emphasize, look, look at all of this that is above the horizon be, you know, minutes before that minute. There's a lot of the Milky Way core visible above the horizon. It just doesn't have all of it. And even when it gets to that point at 427, it's on the horizon. This Milky Way gets higher and higher and higher as it rotates through the night and then I start revealing you know more of that Milky Way core out of the way of the horizon so what are we dealing with in that February Milky Way we are also I'll use yellow battling oh, you know what let's go for a smaller pencil real quick we are battling ah, I miss just writing and making you guys watch me write words it's so much fun battling the horizon in all honesty it is annoying to have me have to write so much and you have to wait for me to write it but i love the visual aid of this so you're battling the horizon constantly battling the horizon because that short short window milky way is also you know we'll draw it again with that circle is also barely getting beyond this point and then getting up on that point you know in that time frame from zero to what in photo pills it actually tells you what degree elevation? Right here, 11 degrees. It goes from zero degrees rise to 11 degrees. So we're looking at just the difference of 11 degrees that that Milky Way has finally risen. So we have a short window. We're battling the horizon. You have to go to a location that's going to give you space to work with. And that's why this one worked so well. In fact, I am just going to go ahead and duplicate this guy real quick. And let's just go into one without the notes. Let's rid ourselves of all of these notes and just appreciate Neil Zingle's image. I'm not going to do a full Monday Moment of Envy. As you can go and watch what I talked about, Neil Zingle's image, over on our my Milky oh, my Facebook page. You can see the Monday Moment of Envy that I did over Neil Zingle's image. It is my favorite February Milky Way. Here's the, th here's the two key things that in February you're going to have to pay attention to. You need to pay attention to your framing. Look at how this core... Um, I'm going to do it with the blue color that I like for the core, but look at how this thing angles. His starts to go down because he pointed very, very, very far to the north. You have to go nearly directly north in order to see what is happening right here. And so typically what happens in the february milky way is what blake fair did right here typically in this awesome shot from blake who has joined us tonight so everyone give blake some props blake fair a survivor of dropping his milky way gear 30 feet off a cliff including the gear that is his legs and this Right here is a cool shot from Trona Pinnacle, that place, <laughs> Trona Pinnacles, I'll just say it. It's not overrun yet like Mesa Arch. I can say Trona Pinnacles. He went with something that features the foreground as just like spikes, like a texture at the bottom of the sky. They don't have one pinnacle that is up here, up here, up here, and like framing that Milky Way core in between them. There's nothing like that in this shot, but... What he has is a great example of how to take a you know, flat horizon and bring a lot of interest in thanks to this leading line that goes out here, creates this shape. And this shape is kind of a counterbalance to this shape. So we have a really interesting feature here, a really interesting feature there, and a really interesting feature in the bottom left. And then it continues with the Milky Way right there. And the negative positive balance here is just terrific. I'm not doing full Monday Moment of Envies. My big point is to feature how he's cropped in on the core. 
that is what most of you are going to do. You're going to get stuck with foreground that maybe all the way looking north isn't going to play well with the whole image. You might have something really interesting right here, and when you look more north, you're just going to see more of this, you know? There's like nothing even poking up at all. It's all the same. It's all the same. And so this right here is what he had to deal with and goes, you know what? I'm going to crop in, feature the main part of the core, and let it just continue up and rise out of my image. It's on like a rise as it leaves the edge of the frame right there. And so this Milky Way is what typically a February Milky Way look like. It's not a really good here comes the core. Oh, let's do this with this pencil. Here comes the core, and it goes up, goes up, goes up, and curls down and creates what we consider that glorious panorama. We don't have that panorama in February. It starts getting good in March. I'll show you. This is my favorite image of all time, and it happened in March. I'll just show you this one with all the framing like that. You can see how this Milky Way right here continued and did its arch up and down all the way over to that edge. And that only happened because I waited and waited and waited for the Milky Way that was on the horizon right here to go up more than 11 degrees and even higher. And then what happens is you get a little bit of curve in this end of the Milky Way band. And so... That February Milky Way is kind of like this. Let's just get rid of all this graphical drawing. It's kind of like this Milky Way right there. You just kind of goes up and it ends off the frame. It ends off the frame. It doesn't have that completion. It doesn't have that, I'm going to go and curl down and end over there on that far left. I just, it's not as good for a panorama in February, and yet... Neil Zingle managed to create the best version of it I have ever seen. Gosh, I love this image, Neil. So I've been gushing over this a lot. It's been like a Monday moment of envy, so let me just shut up about that so we can get to my new favorite tip of all time for Milky Way photography. And just appreciate that when you go out on an adventure right now in February, this is what you're going to be coming up against. If you're lucky enough to include 100 yards of rocks in your foreground and something interesting like the Iron Giant just ready to rise up, raw. that is so cool. The way that he low-level lit the eyes and then everything else has the kissing of snow on there, which February will give you in certain areas, and if you're not in that area at the right you know coincidental time you'll miss it because this stuff melted by like two in the afternoon for sure and so this really really cool image is a good example of what we're all shooting for in february if you can't get a terrain that cooperates with that wide of a space then go for something awesome like what we have here with blake fair he has a really great example of using what you're given and featuring what is terrific about the Milky Way and just having a great image still, despite not being that long panorama. So we have February Milky Way, short window, battling with the horizon. Let's just write the two last things that are going to come up on here. Um, panos? No. No panos. Let's just write this in small. Really. Not really. Not really panos. Not like you're wanting. Not like you're picturing. But if your terrain is wide, wide foreground, and interesting from edge of the frame to the other edge of the frame, you will have a great February Milky Way. So let's go back into photo pills real quick and talk about February Milky Way. Because right now we're obviously leading into a new moon. Uh, not a new moon, a full moon. And yet it's still possible to capture right now. So wherever you are personally located, you're going to have an opportunity tonight. Tomorrow night, yes, at least in Goblin Valley, I hit this arrow up here again. The next night, okay, some of my time has been cut. Almost only an hour to deal with, but I can still do that. I can still do that. The next night... Okay, 
four minutes. That's not quite enough time. I want to track or I want to do this. I can't capture it in that four minutes there. So this is not going to work out. But when can it happen again? Let's just keep going through. Valentine's Day is not going to be a Milky Way day. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All the way through the rest of the month. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. That is the tough part about this year is that it will be at the end of the month and the beginning of the month for most of the months. Um, the Milky Way Photographer's Almanac that I created last year is being redone for 2022. If you are a current owner of the 2021 Milky Way Photographer's Almanac, then you're going to get a free copy in 2022 because I haven't been able to put the time into it like I wanted to. And so I'm just going to gift everyone who supported me last year a free copy. Those of you who don't have a copy, I'm glad to pay. I'm glad to send you one <laughs> and you can pay for it. But it's going to be a copy of both 2021 and 2022. I don't think you'll get anything out of that PDF of the 2021, honestly, but I'm going to give you the same information from 2021 in the 2022 example of it, but the calendar will be set for the days of 2022. And in short, that calendar says, hey, here's your best weeks of every month to go out for Milky Way photography. That's what it's all about. And so looking at this, it, get, it, it gets good again in Goblin Valley, really starting on the 26th. Yeah, 26th. So the morning of February 26th at 4.23 a.m., the moon will start rising on me, but I have had an hour I had an hour so that February Milky Way it is tight it's now over the next couple days wherever you live depending on where you live and then again at the end of the month so be ready to go again at the end of the month leading into March and again March is fantastic for a panorama towards possibly more in the end of March so keep an eye out for that we'll talk more about those windows of opportunities that you can have during the month in future Milky Way Wednesdays, but tonight I do want to talk about that moon Milky Way when that moon window of opportunity. So let's look at this real quick. What do we have? This is a waxing gibbous moon, just like we're having right now. And what's my color? Big, small, orange. All right, let's do let's do large at least. Yellow. This right here is showing three fourths of that moon has been illuminated. And you're looking at it in the daytime as you look outside in the afternoon. Okay, there's the moon. That's what it looks like. So what are we learning from this? What can we glean really fast from looking at the shape of the moon? When you look at the moon in the northern hemisphere, you need to read it in reverse. So you look at that and go, okay, here's the left side. Here's the right side of the moon. And I see that the first part of the moon is in darkness. So there's going to be one fourth of darkness and one, uh, sorry, three fourths of light. So you can look at that moon and know automatically one fourth, three fourths. Your night will also mirror that. Your night will be one fourth dark and three fourths light. Look at this one. We have the opposite, where one fourth of it is going to be light, and three fourths of that night is going to be dark. The part where you have to flip it in the northern hemisphere is down here. You can look at this. So that first fourth is lit. It actually is telling you that the last fourth of your night is lit. Let me emphasize that again with this other page. Here is the moon window of opportunity. On one of my videos, you'll see the moon window opportunity. I haven't put it in the description yet, but I'll put a link to signing up for this tip sheet where it gives you all this information in a sheet that you can keep as a PDF on your phone. But this window of opportunity is basically considering here's the twilight periods after sunset. Here's the twilight periods leading up to sunrise. And in between these periods is, you know, full darkness. And during that moment of full darkness, the moon is going to come up maybe halfway through the night and fill in the last half, or maybe it comes up really early in the night, and it's lit, lit, lighting up the sky the whole night long. And so this moon window of opportunity can be summarized with this graphic right here. On a new moon, full darkness is not touched by a moon. On a first quarter moon, half the night is and half the night isn't. On a last quarter moon, the exact same percentage, but it's different times of the night. It's open at the later part of the morning, and it last quarter moon is open at the first part of the night and all the other ones in the same sort of way. So when you're looking at the moon like this and you go, okay, 
I have three-fourths of the moon that's dark. Three-fourths of my night is going to be dark, and I'm in the northern hemisphere reading from left to right. It's not going to be the beginning of the night when the moon is up. It's actually going to be the end. I'll write end with the correct word for letter first. The end of the night. The last three-fourths of the night is going to be, oh, I just did it wrong. I did it wrong exactly like I told you. It's so hard. In the Southern Hemisphere, this is perfect. You look at that and go, here's the beginning of the night. Here's the end of the night. Read the moon left to right, and that's how it goes in your night. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're flipped. I got to remember that we're flipped, and I was talking about being flipped, and I still said it wrong. You have three-fourths of the night dark. It's going to be your first, first three-fourths of your night. So let's go back and look at that moon shape again. Well, I got it over here. You look up, walking from your car after work, and you see, oh, it's a waxing gibbous. It has three-fourths of the moon lit up. Okay, it's which side of the moon is lit up? The right side of the moon. Okay, so the beginning of the night is going to be all lit, but there's that slight sliver, that one-fourth of the night, that it's going to be dark, and that's when I want to go, which means towards morning, that's going to be the dark time, and that's the moon that we have right now. The moon that we have right now is 70% plus illuminated, and it's up right now while I'm talking. But tomorrow morning at 3 a.m., it's finally going to set. And from 3 a.m. to 5.30, I have an opportunity, like it says in photo pills. Let's go back to today. Yeah, like it says in photo pills, from 4.31 to 5.51. Oh, that is great. Despite being this gigantic of a moon on the, on the 10th, it's still going to be that window. So the first tip of the cosmos is know your moon where you can look at it and go, okay, I have plenty of time. And realistically, the main tip is you can go out almost every night of the month. Don't hold to the full, don't hold to the new moon week only. All right, let's do it. Time for my favorite tip. It's time for my favorite tip. How's everyone doing in the chat? I'm looking over here and reading some of the chat. I haven't seen any all caps recently, so no one's asking me any questions that need to come through right now. It's time for my favorite tip, my new favorite tip. These constellations bookend the Milky Way. You know the Milky Way core is there even if you have light pollution blocking it. If you can make out this constellation, this constellation on the right is, anyone know? I, I left it blank so that people who know off the top of their head can remind themselves, but the answer is, did I just make a new page? I didn't want to make a new page. The answer is this. Scorpius is on the right of the Milky Way core, and Sagittarius is on the left. And Sagittarius is nice later in the year to help you know where that core is because right here, when you look at that tea kettle right here, you can kind of see it pointing right here towards the core. That is the core of the Milky Way right there. And so it points directly towards it. So when you see that triangle part of Sagittarius's front end right there, you're like, okay, so the core is right there. Light pollution is blocking it. When I get out to the beach or something, I'm going to see that more clearly. End of the year for us, Northern Hemisphere. Now, my favorite, absolute favorite tip is this. It's my new favorite tip and I tell everyone I can that if you can see what I sometimes call the rake I should take it off this pen so it stops trying to do that the rake coming off of Antares let's go back get rid of that big arrow I like the circle though so if you see this rake shape coming off of this big bright yellow orange star of Antares then you know where the Milky Way is going to be in one hour. Let me emphasize that tip again. If you look out on your horizon and you see Antares and that rake shape, you know that rake shape, you know where the Milky Way core is going to be in an hour. Watch. Let's go over here to a flat sky. This is our typical morning when we look out off in the distance, Mary Beth and I saw this driving into Mesa Arch at the crack of dawn. Oh, way earlier than the crack of dawn, honestly. And we saw up over the horizon, she's like, hey, I think that's the Rofuki. I'm driving, looking, driving, looking. Is that really on Terry's? It's, it is, right? Oh, where are the three? Where the rake? Oh, 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 here it is. The rake. There it is. The rake. 
this star, that star, this star, whatever its name is, coming in with Antares. That is the rake, that shape, but realistically, you only need to pay attention to that orange star. That orange star that is Antares. You know it's Antares when you can connect the dots to the rake shapes and go, ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part of Scorpius. That is the top head of Scorpius, and I'm drawing, I think, to the wrong one because I zoom out. This is a much brighter star, so I think those are the rakes. Let's look at the later period of the day. Mm -mm -mm, looking at these shots without showing you guys. T -t 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 -t. Yeah, I think I am just drawing the, the lines to a different star, but who cares? You'll see it with your naked eye because those are the stars that stand out, and you'll see that rake. So what happens when you're on the horizon and you look, and look at this picture that I have right here. This picture that I have, I have circled just that area with Antares kind of roughly in the center. It's a little bit below. That spot, Antares. And look at the time, 10.37. Wait, I think that's the current time. That can't be 10.37 unless I had the weird time zone set up. But let's go to the next picture where I haven't moved that circle, and I just moved the Milky Way forward. And look at where that circle stayed. An hour later, there's the core. You see the core right here, and it's right on that. As Antares moves, that Milky Way core follows it precisely. So now I'm going to circle in a different spot, up here, higher in the sky, just to prove it again. Um, this time says 1259, but I'm not even certain what time zone that's declaring. But maybe it's PM. You know what? Maybe it is PM in May, and that's why I did it in May, because it still rises in May. That that would add up. So 12.59 a.m., and the other ones were 10.30 p.m. Okay, cool. So 12.59 a.m., you see that there's here's the rake, here's Antares. It's going up like that. And, okay, I know that let's pretend that we have this really cool rock structure here that makes, like, this shape around and kind of frames the Milky Way, goes down and has some interesting shapes, and then more rocks over here and mountains in the distance. And so you know that you're going to have space. Let's draw with a different color. You know you're going to have space here. You know what? I'm just going to do this thing. You know you have space here going all throughout in between these two pillars where you can see that the sky is visible around those pillars. So you're thinking, man, what if I got the row of Fuki in that space that I painted and shaded in blue? So now you start moving your tripod right and left until you get the row of Fuki showing up in that spot. And then you go, okay, I like this composition. They're kissing this, you know, inside saddle area right there a little bit. I like that. That's what I want the Milky Way to do it. So then, how much time do I have to wait until the Milky Way core is in that exact spot? One hour. One hour. That's all you have to wait. And then that Milky Way core will move right into position where that row of Yuki was. And boom, your Milky Way core is where you had it. Let's go back. I'll just uh, take what I'll do. I'll do this. Nope, don't come all the way out. I want the app. No, not the drop. There we go. There we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and just take all of this. I'm going to copy it. Let's go ahead and copy that to one of my frames. Perfect. Oh, I just shortened it. Who cares? Let's go over here where we had an hour later Milky Way. I'm going to paste it right there. Now that Milky Way, if I were to... Oh, can I get rid of that by itself without just erasing it? Probably not. Let's just erase it. There's that Milky Way, right where we want to be, kissing up against this rock. And in that space, I have a composition that I laid out an hour earlier, knowing that that Milky Way core was going to show up in that spot. And I can line it up. you got photo pills. you got Planet for Photographers. you got many ways that you can know where that Milky Way is going to be. But when you're on location and you're thinking, ah, the Milky Way hasn't come above the horizon yet. Where is it going to be? Look for that rake, look for Antares, and go, boom, okay, in an hour it's going to be there. I have my coolest, like, cactus right here, so 
I'm going to go more left than I thought I was going to be because I want that cactus to be, you know, nice, cool, prongy thing. I'm almost flipping you off. Nice, cool, prongy thing coming up and have the Milky Way go right on top of it. So then I'm going to keep moving my tripod and keep moving my camera until I get what, let's say the camera right there is in Terry's. I line it right up and boom. Okay. I just got to wait an hour and that Milky Way core is going to be there right there. So absolutely love this new tip that where Roafuki goes comes the Milky Way, comes the Milky Way. Whew. All right. We did it. I told you that tip. It only took me 40 minutes to get to it, and we did it. Thanks for hanging out with the Milky Way Wednesday so far. I am going to do a Q&A section, and we're going to talk about some other things about that Milky Way, that favorite Milky Way, as you please. I am yours till 8 o'clock. But my new favorite tip is that if you see the row of Fuki and you see it up there in the sky, you know, okay, that's where the Milky Way is going to be. That is where it is heading. So that's if I circle that space with my mind, I know that this part of the Milky Way will move up into that space. Let me see if I have a good graphic of that. Kind of. Kind of don't. Let's see. Nope, nope, nope. All of this came from my presentation at the Nightscaper conference last year. And this is... The graphics work so well, I decided tonight just to reuse them for it. But if you know Mary Beth Kaczynski, we're both going to be at the Nightscaper Conference here in 2022 in Kanab. And I hope that you will join. If you go to nightscaper.com and decide to join us down there in Utah, make sure you put down that I told you to come and that uh, I can get a little bit of a kickback from the National Parks at Night guys saying, hey, Aaron, this person joined thanks to you. So we'll give you some of that profit. So that'd be awesome. And a thank you from you to me if you do that. That and use my name. So I'm giving some seconds for messages and questions to come in. And while we do that, I'm going to take a sip. All right. So while the other questions that might come in are going to come in, I'm going to go ahead and tackle Ryan Luna's comment up here. He says, here's his favorite tip right now. My tip of the day, if you are tracking relatively close to the car, bring a beach umbrella to block the wind. And so he says, you can just anchor the umbrella in a position to block the wind. It won't be touching the tripod, and I do it all the time in the desert. You know, even though the wind might not be so bad to move your tripod... And it's not so bad that it you know moves that umbrella and causes more problem like a big sail because you anchor it. I love the idea of keeping that wind-blown sand off of my face. As I'm trying to look at my camera, I'm getting blown. When I'm over there at an area near Factory Butte, I always get wind-blowing sand right into my face. and It's like sandblasting my eyeballs. It's miserable. Speaking of sandblasting eyeballs, the coral pink sand dunes area where it can sandblast your eyeballs is one of the areas that I'll be for my Nightscaper workshops. i just trying to get some options that are easy to drive to. Toadstool Hoodoo, Coral Pink Sand Dunes are one of the top options for those without a nice Jeep. And so we will be doing a hike out and into the Coral Pink Sand Dunes. As last time from the distant viewing area was trash in my opinion. Oh, great sky, foreground too low to be interesting. So I can't wait to go out and hike to a dune, bring that dune up in our frame, and then we can see it against the skyline and get a Milky Way up. Then it's going to be fun. Then Coral Pink Sand is going to be fun. As long as it doesn't sandblast our eyes off, we're going to have fun there. So if you're at Nightscaper Conference, I hope you'll join me at Toadstool Hoodoo, Coral Pink Sand Dunes. I'm considering a cave that's famous, but I'm afraid, Kirk, you've been there. You went there on a night you thought you'd be the only one, and you were one of like 12. And I just think that everyone in Nightscaper Conference is going to go there next this year. And so I just figured that that location, despite being difficult to get to, is still going to be really packed, really busy. And so I don't expect to be able to do that. But if I can, one of the nights, Mary Beth and I should combine and do that. I think the first night, Mary Beth and I might do that for the first night there. The conference is in April. In fact, let me just pull it up so the information's there and easy to be seen. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm going to go scroll through some of the other messages that may have come through. But just go to nightscaper.com, and I'm going to share my screen again. Nightscaper.com, you can register. Um, my face is blocking it. Let's go ahead and unlock me. Let's move me somewhere over here. So I'll uh, – maybe there. 
<laughs> Let's just go in there. You can register up on the site. Join in. It's April 26th through the 29th. And in Canab, this is the Canab facilities. Really great big room. Um, awesome experience that we've had last time. They will have replays only for anyone who wants to get them, but they're more expensive to buy the replays later. So come to the conference, get the early bird. There's 67 tickets remaining for the early bird price of $4.99. Beyond that, there's 100 at the conference plus the replays option at $6.99. So join us, it's four days, all right? 26th, 27th, 28th, and 29th, four days of lectures and teaching, and then you have those four nights to go out and do adventures with Milky Way photographers that you love. And I'm going to accept these cookies because I'm just trapped. Everyone else, we're all trapped. And let's look at um, the speakers. There, they've hidden it. So then you can see everybody on here, Jess Santos, Mike Shaw, Joshua Snow, Bet of Maya Foot, Mary Beth Kaczynski. Look at that, Mary Beth. Here are the top six. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, wait, I'm seven. Woohoo! Uh, Aaron King, Dr. Brian Richards, Christine Richer, uh, Matt Hill, Gabriel Biederman, Chris Nicholson, Lance Kamig, and Tim Cooper. All five of those guys are the National Park, National Park at Night guys, and they run the show now. They own it. They bought it from Royce Bear, and Nightscaper's annual conference will be under their watchful eye. And they're going to be awesome. So it'll be fun to see what things they change this year coming into it. And whatever that guy looks like, that bear. Woohoo! I love that beard too. I'm glad Briny's there. I wonder where Eric's gonna be. I hope he'll be he'll make it. There's more more speakers being announced, or at least they used to say that. They used to say more speakers being announced, but maybe they pulled back. Briny and Eric, they have the same skill set of the Star Tracker, and so Briny's awesome. And of course Royce Bear, you know the father of night photography. Thomas says, are light pollution filters worth getting to use with an Astro modded D810? Okay, interesting comment. Um, I am going to move this down some on my screen. I'll put my iPad out for any questions that come in that require me to draw, or at least give me a reason to draw, please. But I'm gonna move me back over here. I'm gonna go back to my iPad screen. So, light pollution filters, Thomas. Here's the thing. You're asking someone who knows that here's the light blooms on the west and here's the light bloom on the east. And then within those light blooms, you've got some of these. So your islands, your Swiss cheese holes are the dark areas in the east. Our Swiss cheese holes are actually light areas in the in the west. It is incredibly beneficial to live where I live. Um, one of the one of the members hanging out with us tonight is Rhonda Pierce and she just moved to New Mexico. Light pollution map dot info. That is what I use now. It's the most accurate uh, light pollution map that you can get now. And this it has lots of, oh yeah, I'm not going to allow marketing cookies, statistics, or preferences. Thank you. And that is Europe. Terrible, right? Well, I'll leave the chat over here while I talk about our light pollution challenges. As you saw, I'm referencing, let's turn this off. Oh, crap. VRBO. Let me put my face over these ads. <laughs> Take that ads and the live chat. Let's bring them up here. And then I will just kind of zoom out and give us a uh, text that's visible. Okay, we can see our chats now. Okay, cool. So this is that, you know, island of light, like I'm talking about in the west, and then these islands of dark over on the east. So I don't think about light pollution filters. I just drive a little further, or I point my camera the right direction to avoid that light pollution. So I don't play with them. I can't tell you the best ones. But I can tell you, though, Thomas, that a light pol... <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda's like, I can shoot the Milky Way from my driveway, you jerk. Um, the light pollution filters in the past have been for sodium halide lights, you know, the kind of yellow orange glow that come off of sodium halide. And now we have so many LED lights, they're just different, they're different colors, they don't get fixed by those filters as much. I have not used one ever, and I'm never going to, because I'm just gonna go to a cool location. I mean, I live in Utah. Yes, I'm up here in Provo, in the lowest part of the red, terrible zone, but I go 45 minutes, I'm out of it. It's not my driveway like Rhonda, but I can go right to it. You know, these 
this area down here where national uh, natural bridges national monument is it's just so dark i don't need to think about it so my advice thomas since you can't actually just move probably and have it easier for you i would say if you had a d810 and you're modifying the sky don't put the filter on there It'll help reduce some of the light pollution, but you can reduce that light pollution glow in post afterwards if you can keep that light pollution glow down. Um, let me show you an example of light pollution glow in my picture that actually made it look amazing. And this is the one I've shown all of you many times, the one of me out at the salt flats, because we were going to talk about that at the end of the day here for Keith. And the salt flats, oh, going back a few Milky Way Wednesdays, I saw something of it. Woohoo! Here we go. Salt flats. This light glow right here, in fact, I should bring my chat back to where I want to and bring my face back where I want to be. Up top, chat down below, kablamo. I don't know why I say kablamo a lot lately. I'm saying kablamo a lot, and I didn't get it from anywhere. I just decided to start saying it. Salt flats has salt lake. All of that light bloom from that red area you were seeing on the light pollution map. All of this, basically think about standing here in the salt flats looking over to this. And that big bloom is what you're seeing here, right? Let me minimize this so I don't have the ads. This bloom is below the core. I don't worry about doing anything in post even in this because it's so far away. So the location is key far more than the filter. Daryl says he uses Hoyas, and when I shoot DSOs with my camera, they will still help cut down the glare. So that's good. He uses it for deep sky objects. So he can vouch for a filter like that not causing any negative effect with getting – because infrared is going to come through those filters also no problem. Just I don't – think that you want to add more things blocking your infrared that you've got that astro modded one that astro modded camera body for you want to keep all that low contrast reds and nebulosity colors that are going to come through and anything that changes the colors too much it might be weird in post to fix you'll have to spend a little extra learning curve to get you know out of that modded version of your coloring and your balances but you know, Daryl speaks and says that his does work for cutting down the glare, and he likes to use it. So that's awesome. The Cuban Chef, at Rhonda Pierce. Here's a message for you, Rhonda. Looks like you've already responded, but ouch. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Keith says, it's great living in a Bortle 1000 area. <laughs> yeah, Keith. Sorry, man. Uh, Nick Holt said, scroll it to Australia. Yeah, man, you you bet. You know, I could recognize Perth from a satellite just thanks to the light pollution map. Because you look at an area that's mostly dark, and then you see this area of Perth being lit up, man. Ooh. So this is Western Australia, living like the West of the United States, and then Eastern Australia, they're really not that bad. You really have big gaps. I mean, that is a glorious dark land that will kill you, but awesome. <laughs> Nick's place is probably the winner for dark skies. And he's got the Southern Hemisphere skies. Uh, that's a big win, too. Uh, yikes, I'm totally jealous. Totally jealous. And my cats want to eat more food, and he decided to tip over his food. You bum. All right, so look at the Salt Flats Im image, Keith. Here's the thing that was key about making Salt Flats work. Zoom in on there's the truck. You can see how it's still dry out here still dry out in this area but there is a large large puddle this was the very second day yeah june 2nd of june you mentioned you're going to come out in the end of june that's not going to be as strong because most likely this will all evaporate and be gone if it's even there at that point my workshop is going to be <laughs> workshops.photogadventures.com. My workshop for the salt flats that isn't sold out yet is May 26th through May 30th. And I'm hoping because we're early enough, it's either going to be fully flooded all the way back on top of us, or it's going to have maybe that opportunity again. And we're going to experience a great one. I have a friend in the UK joining us. He's the only one so far, seven remaining slots. And I actually have something exciting to announce about that, which... I might get to it tomorrow, but to be honest, it's going to be next Thursday that I announce it most likely. I'll announce it Wednesday on Milky Way Wednesday, but Thursday will be the first day of competing to be given a flight out to Utah. Join me for the workshop. 
Okay, I won't announce anything yet, but my whisper said something, and you probably heard it very clearly. But yeah, that workshop is going to sell out and fill up thanks to that, as well as Mary Beth and I are going to our Aurora Chasing Milky Way workshop that only has one slot taken up so far. So I hope that you'll join us for that. That is March 24th through 31st. It's the end of next month. Milky Way, Sunset, Landscape, Aurora, and Astrophotography Deep Sky. We'll be doing all of that type of photography all in one workshop. So if you want to hang out with Mary Beth Kaczynski and myself, that is your best option. So Keith, I would say if you can change the time of when you go, that's the best. If not, no worries. Get out there in the salt flats and then drive. But do not go to the left where the mud flats are. That's where people get stuck. That's where I saw, I was coming back from a workshop and I saw that, um, I heard a weird sound and I look up and go, wait, what? Um, why is someone driving over there? They're crunching through the mud flats and I watched them go and go and go and get stuck. So when you drive to Wendover, see Wendover is getting really bright and coming into this terrain. When you pull off on this exit, you see this road, there's this long road that comes through and then ends suddenly on the Bonneville Speedway. And when you come to this point, anything from this road back, that is going to get you trapped. Down below here, it dries and it's good. That's part of the whole Speedway. They come here and go, Vroom! but um, anything north of this between, uh, you know what, forget it. Maps.google.com. Let's just show you a satellite view of it. Why waste any more time? showing you something you can't see very well okay end of this speedway so between here and the mountains lots and lots and lots <laughs> lots and lots and lots of mud so if you stay off of this pathway drive the path that everyone takes and go here and then drive out you can drive for a mile two miles three miles out here i found my water in an area that I, I guess I shouldn't reveal on this right now. I have other videos that reveal it, so you guys can find that and go my other videos and see what I said. But I don't drive all the way out to here. I don't have to. There's awesome stuff between here and there, and I would just go there, Keith. Find an interesting salt crystal kind of terrain, something that looks cool. Like if you go to Milky Way, go to my website, Milky Way Photographers Guild. No, no, no. Uh, I got it. That thing is so similar to MilkyWayPhotographers.com that it always pulls up first. MilkyWayPhotographers.com, the site that myself and Kurt Kais, well, Kurt Kais mostly runs. Oh, I'm really zoomed in right now on the site. Let's zoom out. You go to Milky Way Workshops. Oh, whoops. Milky Way Tutorials. You're going to see a picture in here on uh, my awesome Milk Sharp Milky Way. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, wait, it's still not the real course page. Oh, you're the $97 one. I never gave it. Oh, that's crazy. All right. The $30 one is being sold up until 200 people buy it, and it's still got availabilities for it. And you kind of don't get to it unless you come to my page here, then try to leave. Where is that pop-up? Oh, you're not happening right now, pop-up? Because I have the speak workers up. Oh, come on. <laughs> Where is my sale? Where's my sale? Oh, how do I get to that? Oh, you know what? Go to one of my YouTube videos. I think I have it on here. Let's go back. I think it's on this one. Yep, I'll find it on this one. Nice ad and 70% off. There we go. Okay, cool. This is the version of the site that I wanted to show you. It's this picture right here, but hopefully it will show up in this. Okay. So check this out. I'm going to play this video, but I'm going to go full screen just so you can see. This is what you'll have in the Salt Flats, Kurt Keith, the stuff that you will experience. I walked out from that pathway instead of driving because it was still a little soft and I didn't want to do any damage to it, but I could walk on it. Turns out everyone else was driving and they almost hit me a bunch of times. But here's what I found. This crystal right here. This guy lifted up and made a nice little snaking turn. Let's see if you get, get a good view of it at any other angle. Do, 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 do. Nope, 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 nope. 
nope, 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 nope. Okay, you don't see it in this preview at all. But you get an idea that you see these things pop up out of nowhere as they've dried. The salt has dried and made different geometric shapes. The closer you get to that um, dike, you're going to see more of these. And inside the dike and beyond the dike towards the rest area, you're going to see more of those geometric patterns in the salt. And that's what you want to look for. Really neat stuff. Totally recommend it. Muhammad says, Aaron, in your opinion, what is the best dark sky location in the country to shoot the Milky Way? Oh, man. A bunch of tie breakers. That's all I can say, Muhammad. There's a bunch of tie breakers, and it depends on the time of year. Um, so I will come back to what you said there, Keith, but I want to show the light pollution map and answer. Oh, see, this is the pop-up I was looking for. Uh, light pollution map. Best dark sky location. The reality is, is that... You don't need to be in the middle of a dark sky location to have it be good. You want to have as much dark sky between you and the Milky Way. So, for instance, if I stood right here, um, let's go to Las Vegas. It's crazy bright, right? If I was standing here, if the Milky Way was off to the wet east, I would have St. George light pollution. I would want to come over here into this area and stand inside some light pollution, but I'm looking away from the big light pollution towards, you know, this Havasupai area that is all very, very dark. And so between me and the Milky Way is dark, it works. If I wanted to find a Milky Way that was doing this, I'd have to be here all the way up until July. Starting in July, the Milky Way is already vertical and facing south, and this area will not work as well anymore. And after July, going into the fall, the Milky Way is over here from you know south to the southwest and is completely being blocked by Las Vegas. I have to move my position. And so, for instance, Joshua Tree. That's an area that is usually really great, Joshua Tree National Park, but... You come down from Yucca Valley and enter into Joshua Tree. Oh, I can do a satellite, but I won't do it right now. And you can get later in the year where it's uh, southern and vertical. That Milky Way is being blocked by all the Yucca Valley light pollution and Palm, Palm Springs, and it is not great anymore. It was great at the beginning of the year looking over towards the east. And so the best dark sky location in the U.S., I would say... <sighs> Man, I'd say get to these cool areas that have cool landmarks plus dark sky. And then you have to go in the right time of the year so that between you and the Milky Way core, it's the right way. If my subject is only over here and looking this way, that's great in the beginning of the year in the east. But when my subject is behind me and the west is where the Milky Way core is, it's a bad time to go to that same location. So it's all contingent on time of year and where that light pollution is. So for instance, smoke is a bad thing and a bad experience in the summer from July through September really in Utah. So where do I go? I go to the coast of Oregon because I look out over the ocean where it's dark and I get a great Milky Way that's vertical and coming out over beautiful sea stacks and just beautiful Oregon, right? But I would never go to Oregon for the early easterly, you know, early morning, March, April, May even Milky Way. I go there in June. I don't go to Oregon until June. That's the earliest I go. And if I want to capture a low Milky Way in a panorama, I go to Crater Lake. So, you know, that reminds me. Crater Lake has one of the best skies. Let me just tell you that because it's high elevation. It's really cold. And just it's higher elevation than areas in southern Utah that I love. And so southern Utah has some stuff and particles in the sky that will kind of diminish the view of the Milky Way. But at Crater Lake, it's clear. The clarity is gorgeous. And it just turns out really fantastic. And so probably the best Milky Way core, you know, quality in salt flats. Yeah, it's not bad. And then you look at something like Crater Lake. Actually, it's not one I drew on. And, I mean, this is the same kind of capture, very similar settings. That's the same month. And you look at that Milky Way core there versus the Milky Way core there. It's just more vibrant. By no measure of change on my post-processing, that becomes more vibrant. And so Crater Lake is one of the top. <laughs> Crater Lake is definitely one of the top, Muhammad. So Keith, go back to what you were saying. Um, you were trying to, yeah, we're trying to move Blah, blah, blah. We are trying to do a bit of travel portrait work. Uh, wasn't too worried about the reflection, even though it would be cool. Yeah, it's amazing. 
Milky Way is a bit of a second thought. Okay, cool. So going the same time that you're going is great. Just make sure you find a subject. It's definitely darker than where I'm from, so I'm going to take advantage of it. Yeah, definitely do. Um, <laughs> Kirk says I'm AT, AT walking because I had the AT, AT shirt on there. But I love Star Wars. Cuban Chef, Aaron, when is the best time to catch the arch of the Milky Way in Utah? Planning to take a trip somewhere in March. From March to June, that is the panorama time for the Northern Hemisphere. And any one of those months, any one of those nights is perfect for Utah to do a panorama. There's no problem with Utah in any of those months for a panorama. This is my Island in the Sky shot. And you can see how in March it looked fantastic. Um, this is a arch in June and it's the last month so from the first month of March to the last month really of June it's terrific and you can see that it roughly looks the same it's just I have to wait later in the morning for it to show up here where over here it happened right at dusk you know right after twilight period and boom there's the Milky Way already and at the end of June it starts getting a little too high for an easy panorama but you can still pull off a very distorted very large screen um, panorama at July you know where you really wide angle bum, 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 bum. perfect tip Muhammad says okay awesome sweet and you can't see the lights from Vegas there head to Central Oregon <laughs> oh yeah Kirk's like you can go to Oregon Central Oregon for dark sky and you'll avoid Las Vegas lights. Uh, Daryl says, so take the death hike up Everest for the clearest shots. Yeah, honestly, a shot from Everest would be one of the most clear skies you can get as you know the oxygen is low, the atmosphere is not affecting the camera as much, but I would say the cold might make your gear not as useful. I don't know how well the gear would perform, honestly. I'd be curious to see how well gear worked at the peak of Everest. I'm not ever going to be in shape for Everest, and now the way Everest is, uh, people are in like a big old like traffic stop line to get up to the top where their oxygen tank is running out. I don't think I will go to Everest ever. Oregon will be my list for sure. Cuban Chef says, thank you. Let me see if I've missed anybody's comments. So I was at Ryan's comment from the beginning looking for some things that weren't caps but maybe were questions. And in the meantime, maybe I will show you oh, there's going to be a picture on here that talks about the milky way and where it is throughout the year and so i'll just leave that graphic up because for those of you who are brand new to the idea of the milky way core traveling across the night sky in the northern hemisphere from the east all the way over to the southwest this graphic will give you without explanation there's no context but it will give you hey there's neil zingle's image that i first talked about back then I know I teach this many times, so it's got to be in here. I was hoping this is going to be like, oh, just scroll up a little bit and you'll find it and it'll be over. And then you can show them this graphic while you look for text. Aaron Bobnick's image. Love it. Okay, we're just watching Aaron scroll now. This is fun. I could just see people jumping off the stream one after another. <laughs> oh, here's a great spot. If you can ever get... Oh, that's not actually it, but it reminded me of the natural bridge area off of uh, Secret Beach. This is fun. It's just scrolling away. I'm back to like the very beginning of Photog Adventures. This is most likely not going to have what I'm thinking. Maybe it is over on the guild. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I saw I saw her columns. Ah, crap. Oh, well. Looks like I'm not going to find that graphic. I knew I had it in here, but where has it ended up? Astrophotog, maybe. I got to sync that. Okay, let that sync. Uh, greetings, greetings, moon. Yes, yes, yes. Scrolling, scrolling down. Da, da, da. FYI, Aaron... You have two different workshop pages up on your site. 2019 shows up on Google and current year. Man, you're right. I need to fix that. Okay, so Keith helped me with that. EJ from Nightscaper. I hope EJ Rosario is with us still, man. EJ, are we going to see you at this Nightscaper this year? I hope so. You really never delete anything, do you, Kathy says, <laughs> as I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. You know, the chat all of a sudden jumped down, and I missed a lot of messages. Uh, 55 millimeter, my favorite focal length. Don't always have to shoot that for the full panel. Blah, blah, blah. I can't tell if it's a question anywhere. I think he's talking to someone else about it, so I'll bypass Keith's comment. 
Yeah, looks like I am not seeing any more chats and any other questions that are coming in. Right now it is, oh, it's 8.12. We've gone over time already. Sweet. So we have already gone longer than our time. And Astrophotog, there it is. That's the graphic I was looking for. That's kind of what happens with the Milky Way. We got panel months in the beginning. And then we go into a more vertical only Milky Way. And then it's over here. It doesn't talk about being southwest versus east like I hoped. But it tells you basically that you have a low panel, low panel, arching panel, arching panel. And then May and June, actually no, April, May and June, all of those months are great for both. Where you got panoramas. And you got vertical. You just got to wait long enough in the night. And then July, it's only vertical and continues on into being vertical, tipped, 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 and falling down. All right, cool. That was the graphic I was looking for, but it's not exactly anything helpful for our questions now. I don't see any new questions coming in. Thank you so much for joining me on Milky Way Wednesday tonight. I went a little long, but it's because I had my iPad back. That's guaranteed the reason why I went long, because I had the fun of drawing and showing graphics again. So I'm glad to be back with that. If you are new to Milky Way Photography, Okay, if you're new to Aaron King and Photog Adventures and everything, uh, go check out our MilkyWayPhotographers.com website that Kirk helps us write articles for. And he manages, he's the managing director, editor of MilkyWayPhotographers.com for articles and tips. I am going to be filling that out. I say that, but it's already February and I haven't done it yet. But I'm going to be filling that out with a lot of articles pointing to the videos of my two-minute tips and pointing some of the newest to Milky Way photography, newest members to our our um, hobby to see help them learn from the very beginning on as well as join me over in the guild milky way photographers guild if you don't like facebook or ads that's the place to be to hang out with other milky way photographers ask questions ask for advice and share your awesome images when you have a great image i will feature it on monday moment of envy and talk with gushing love over how great your image turned out so if you post your images over there, you have a chance for me to feature you on Monday. Uh, Thomas says, "Great tip with the moon, thank you." Mohammed says, um, "Thank you very, thank you very much, Aaron. That was very informative. I loved having you here. Thanks for your kind words at the beginning, Mohammed. Remember, hold me to it. By the end of 2022, have I upped the quality? As I have some plans to bring things just a little bit better with what I do and what I'm working on. Hey, Kave." Thank you, Aaron, he says. You're welcome. I love to have Kaveh back on here. Kathy, Kaveh, and I. And, oh, no. Oh, oh, who else? Who else? There's someone else. Best lens for a complete arch on an R5. Ooh, man, Cuban chef. You're hitting me with something that is a super chat for a camera that I don't know well enough to give you the best lens. But I'll tell you this. The highest performing astro lenses right now is that 20 millimeter Sigma, a 20 millimeter Rokinon, a 35 millimeter Rokinon, a 14 millimeter Sigma. Those lenses are gold. Um, on that R5, though, whether or not they're going to connect to it, I know the Sigma is got lenses for it. Um, the Rokinons are going to the mirrorless Canons, but I can't speak to each one of those millimeters. Basically, your goal is to get the widest open bucket of light that you can. And I'm going to give you an example real quick. I can't show off the comparison because this is up there, but look through here. See that giant 50 millimeter? That 50 millimeter is fantastic for its open, open aperture. It's widest open at, um, oh, what is it? I'm forgetting. 1.8. 1.8 is how big this aperture will go. So 2.8 is a typical camera, like the lowest it will go or widest open aperture it will go. And if you can get anything underneath 2, you know, f-stop 2, then you are going to be in great shape for something that's going to be good for Milky Photography. So your best lens to get a complete arch is most likely that 20 millimeter Sigma because it's going to be wide enough to help you have a pano that doesn't have too many images. And if you do two rows, it won't be that much work. But it also comes with the benefit of having a very wide open aperture. And it's highly spoken of by Mary Beth Kaczynski, Eric Benedetti. Those are a few amazing photographers who I can speak for. And I am starting to actually get sweaty Whew, under the light. 
under the lights. Maybe I should put some more makeup on. Oh, the adapter works for Roku on for the R5. Rhonda can speak to that. Awesome. Okay, cool. So the adapters we even work really well still. We're doing manual focus anyway, so an adapter does, does this cut your light a little bit sometimes, depending on the adapter. Have you experienced any light cutting with your adapter, Rhonda? I know that if you have to adapt, you might have some stops of light lost, but not much. And your autofocus might be lost, but you don't care in Astro, so it won't matter. Uh, great tip from Phil. Thank you. Kathy says, thanks, Aaron. Mohammed, Aaron, I'm a Sony user. Which camera do you think is the best for astrophotography? Oh, boy. I mean, Easy Rosario's is a fantastic one, but when it comes to actually pictures being taken, you can get in arguments over the higher megapixels aren't as great as the lower megapixel Sony where you go for that one that Mary Beth just bought. What is it, Mary Beth? The Sony A7 IV? Is that what you have? Um, I'm not a gear guy, to be honest. I just don't care about gear. I care more about the technique and making sure everyone's camera can make something work and getting the exposure settings correctly. And I just don't focus on gear. And so I can't answer exactly. Oh, no light drop. Okay, cool. So she's not cutting any of her light stops when she uses her adapter. That's really good news for the R5. Awesome. Um, but your Sony's, like the A7S, the AS, the A7R4, A7R3, those are all terrific cameras for Astro. I, I don't think a camera has been released since 2016 that hasn't been fantastic for Astro. And then we're just kind of you know, picking nits and being anal if we pick the best of the best of the best. And that I leave to DP review and other nerds and not myself. I do not do not come and break things down that much when it comes to which is the best gear. I just know that if you can get glass that has a wide open aperture, you're going to be better suited no matter what camera body you have. If you start to notice noise that you can't resist, you can't fix, you can't stack and fix, you can't different exposure settings and fix, then get a more up to date camera body to go with that great lens. Um, Kirk Kais has mentioned, Muhammad, he has an A7 IV, and it's awesome. He had the A7 III before, and it's good, too. Uh, Keith just upgraded from a Sony A7 III to the A7 IV, and he's hoping to use it soon for Astro. I believe the nice thing about the A7 IV is that the smaller megapixels makes the files a little bit smaller, and so that's nice. You can do a time lapse without feeling like you're killing yourself. Muhammad says, true, it's all about the artistic touch and vision, not gear. Not usually. I mean, there are gear choices you must make if you're going before 2016, but beyond that, just have fun with it. Have fun with what you got. Um, bum, bum, bum. Any other questions coming in? I want to give you guys some time just in case. It is 8.20. Maybe we should call it so I can eat some dinner. Uh, you are all amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight and with other nights. I'll be back Monday at 12 p.m. Mountain Time. So right at noon during your lunch break at work or maybe if you're heading into work or you're in the East Coast and it's the middle of the afternoon, join me for Monday Moment of Envy over on Facebook. I go live there and do a Monday Moment of Envy and pick a picture and talk about it, and I'll be back next Wednesday for another Milky Way Wednesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, so much. And Cuban, thank you for the super chat. That was really kind of you. I appreciate the tip. That's awesome. And uh, anything else we want to talk about? We are going to come back next week and talk about the Raws of my Star Tracker experience in January, showing off how that Raw was showing Barnard's Loop without much effort, right, zero effort. It was a Raw. I could see Barnard's Loop in there. So just tracking brings out that color. And it's just amazing. It's why I love that tracker. I'm excited to get more and more shots of it. Rhonda says, lens choice and coma are probably the biggest factor. Yeah, you know, honestly, your camera body won't come into play as much as choosing the right lens for the aperture and its quality because it might have a coma problem. And that coma problem is there. Like, for instance, this lens is great for taking pictures of my kids. You know, having a nice 50 millimeter, get some bokeh behind them. Yeah. I also know that this 50 can work well for panels on the Milky Way. I hate this lens for Milky Way, I discovered in January. I never have used a 50 millimeter for before, and this is just that nifty 50 from Canon, which makes its focusing on the stars one of the worst experiences I've ever had on getting focus. It's like normally I talk about how it's this big blob that you get to a smaller, tighter blob. Well, in this case, it was an amoeba down to a different shaped amoeba. It's like 
it was a lima bean went from this shape to rotating to this shape. It never came into an orb. It never came tight. It never became tight. And it was frustrating. I hated it. So Kirk's out. Later all. Thank you all for joining me. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, milkywaywednesday at gmail.com, and I'll take your questions and bring them into the show. Thanks so much. Take it easy. Oh, James, can you tell White to get with this? Oh, can you tell what to get with the Skywatcher? Okay, the Astro package and stuff. Let me just show you real quickly where you can find that information fast, and hopefully all these old links are you know, useful. Um, yeah, let's go here and let's do the iPad screen so my text comes over. So if you go to just Google Photog Adventures Podcast Eric Benedetti, just Google that and you're going to come across my episode with Eric Benedetti. And he's joined us on Gear Time. Ooh, maybe this article will have a good link of them. His course, support us at, oh, items discussed, perfect. This should get you, if I click on the Skywatch Star Adventurer right here, can this link work? Yes, it does. Takes you right into Amazon and shows this EQ wedge. So this link right here is an article on photogadventures.com. I am going to paste the link right now. So those of you in the chat, you can click on that, James, and see what else to get. These are the things that were discussed by Eric Benedetti in this episode of Gear Time. And they are typical gear of the Sky Watchstar Adventurer with the Astro Package. That Astro Pack right here, when it comes with that... Um, the declination bracket and this puck, those are the helpful things that are going to make your Astro packet. You make your Skywatch Star Adventure better. You don't want the photo package or the pro pack, get the Astro package. And the, these links will take you to some things as shortcuts to get you there. Uh, the other thing that you might find, and I'll do it here Photog Adventures Podcast, Eric Benedetti. Where's his actual podcast? All right, SoundCloud right here, episode 30. In this episode, we have links. Um, uh, I am playing it in the background. Let's turn that off. All these links to everything he talks about, the EQ wedge, the Astro package, the counterweight kit. Here's some cameras for the beginner talking about a Nikon, a Canon. These ones are like absolute beginner cameras that you can use it for. And then here's some of the lenses that he recommended back then. He's got the 20 millimeter sense, the 20 millimeter Sigma, the 35 millimeter Rokinon that he loves is mentioned here. So you can go to it quickly. Oh, that's right. That's right. All of these things are killed. Okay. I have my work cut out for me. I will post, repost every one of these links right here from Eric Benedetti on this um on our video here this week, um, tonight, tomorrow. It'll take me some time to find these. Tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to watch this replay, and I will have it in there, I promise. Okay, James, thanks so much. Try the Pro Pack. has everything. That's also has everything, Mark. Okay, cool, cool. Awesome. See you next week, Cuban Chef. See you next week. And I don't think I'm missing any other texts. So I will say goodbye to everybody and say thank you for watching. I'm Aaron King with Photog Adventures. I hope you get out there and have an adventure of your own and that you will go and just be dangerous, be, be daring, and go out in the dark and hang out somewhere freaky and to try not to think about what that sound was behind in the bush because that's what a lot of Milky Way photography is, is talking yourself out of being afraid that that's a mountain lion when it's probably just a kangaroo rat. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'll see you next week. We'll be back for more Milky Way Wednesday then. Take it easy.